Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Everybody said, this is the day, is the day that the Lord has made. Lord has made. I, am I am rejoicing. And I'm glad in it in Jesus' name. Come on, give God some more praise, amen. I, I, I tell you what, go ahead and give God praise like you just won the Super Bowl. That's it. Amen. Praise God. Because Jesus won more than a Super Bowl. Amen. Yeah. Amen. He defeated the devil. Praise God. And, and, and hell and everything else that's attached to it in Jesus' name. Somebody say, I, say, I, am, victorious. I am victorious. Say, I'm not trying to be. Don't be moved by what you see. Because I am victorious. Come on, give God another shout of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, again, thank God for Bishop Rick and Deborah Gary Gilhart. Lord, hand clap for them. Praise God. Amen. So glad to be here today. And for all you that are on Facebook, God bless all of you also for what God is doing in your life. In Jesus' name. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to uh, talk to you today on a topic. Then I was wondering, I said, God, I don't know if anybody needs this topic or not. But I thought I'll just check it out just in case. It's called Living Dead Free. Now, yeah, 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 yeah. But I don't know if anybody needs that or not because all y'all got, y'all got your bills paid already and everything's on target and in Jesus' name. Praise God. But uh, just, just, but just in case, uh, uh, in those areas, I was reading a story, I was reading a little article, uh, and it said that uh, the, American total, the, the American total credit card debt uh, in this last quarter, quarter of 2023 is $986 million. Woo! I also seen a, a lot of advertisement going on. They've been having a lot of a lot of entertainers and different people, rappers, that's been advertising. You know, if you if you over ten thousand dollars in debt, we can get the debt canceled off or, or broken. But because everybody, people said, because people folks are in debt. Somebody say amen. amen. And uh, and a lot had to do with people just you know had a hard time. You know, ain't got nothing to do with necessarily we have bad people. Just had a hard time, amen. And uh, so I, I, I want to give you some things that I think that'll be a, 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 a help. In that area, somebody say amen. amen. And, and and I'm gonna start off by reading a verse of scripture in, in the book of Second Kings, chapter number four, verse number one, about this widow woman that was in debt. Her husband had died and left her in debt. Uh, Second Kings chapter four, verse one says, "Now there cried a certain woman of the wives and the sons of, of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, My servant, my thy servant, my husband is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, but the creditor." has come to take unto him my two sons and bondmen. Back in the day, they didn't have no cars you possess. They just took the, they took the kids. <laughs> That's pretty bad, ain't it? Yeah. In verse 2, it said, But Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what do you have in your house? And she said, Thy handmaid don't have anything in the house save a pot of oil. I ain't got much, but I do got a pot of oil left. Verse 3, Then he said, Go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, and even empty vessels, borrow not a few. Verse 4, and when, and when thou art coming to the house, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and thou shalt pour out in, into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. Now, he's telling us something that's almost impossible. You, you're full of debt. You're going to take a little all that you got. <laughs> Are you following me? And look what happens in verse 5. said, And so she went, in, she went from him and shut the door upon her and, and upon her sons and brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. Verse 6 says, and, she, and it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, bring me another vessel. And he said unto her, there is not another vessel more, and the oil stayed. Verse 7, then, came she, then she came and told the man of God and said, uh, go sell, the man of God said, go sell thy oil and pay your what? Pay your debts and live you and your children on the rest. That's my living debt free. Somebody say amen. So this is, this is a woman then that started off. You know, in debt, not because of her own thing, her husband had passed away. And her parents didn't have any insurance at that time, kind of left her in, in, in a straight. But back in that day, when you, you, had no, you didn't have no insurance and you had no money to pay their debts, they took your kids and put, you, put them in prison until you can get paying your debt. Thank God that ain't like today. But, but sometimes them, them, them creditors make you feel like you in prison. Hey, don't tell, don't tell, tell them I ain't here. <laughs> You follow me? Don't answer that phone. Don't answer that phone. 
But, uh, you know, but how many know God wants us to come out of debt? And so I'm going to give you some practical things today. Again, let me say no condemnation. Somebody say amen. But some practical things on how we can begin to conquer and destroy this thing called debt. Doesn't mean that borrowing is a sin, but sometimes it makes you feel like you're not sinned. When you, don't, when you got debt over your head and more outgoing, you got to come in. Somebody say amen. So let me just define debt for a moment. This is my definition of debt. Number one, debt is when you what? Owe something to someone on terms. That's, that's the kind of a debt. Point number two, debt is anything you can't pay. Your outgo is greater than your income. You got, you got more month than you got money. Somebody say, again, no condemnation. But these are just sometimes that life, we end up getting into these things. And I want to give you some practical things today. Because this woman came to the man of God, right? Kind of like she went to church. And her pastor gave her some wisdom and some ideas and some creativity on how she could take what she already had in the house and turn that thing into finances and get her debt paid off. And she and her kids were able to live debt free. So I believe God's bringing the church into that place today where he, cause he, got, got, so much, he got too much that he wants to do in your life. That, 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 and that you, the dream that you have, that if you had, to, if you had not so much debt, you could do a whole lot better. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. So, so let me give you some things on, on why we should live free from debt. Number one, <clears throat> debt robs you of your independence. Amen. It takes away your personal power. Yes. Look at the book of Proverbs chapter 22, verse number 7, what it says. It says, the rich what? Rules over the poor. And the borrower is servant to the lender. So God says, I don't want you to be servant to no lenders. Somebody say amen. amen. So, you know, where debt puts you on the weaker side. Ain't nothing wrong with debt, but debt puts you on the weaker side. It makes you the servant, not the lender. But what is God's purpose for our lives? Deuteronomy chapter number 28, verse number 12, what does it say there? The Lord shall what? Open to thee his good. Y'all ready for God's treasure to get open to you? Amen. amen. The Lord shall open to you his good treasure. The heaven give the rain unto thy land unto a season, and to bless all the work of your hand, and you're going to be what? You're going to lend to many nations, and you're going to not have to borrow. God says, ain't nothing wrong with borrowing, but it puts you in the back, on the back seat. God says, I want you to switch places, but you're going to become the lender. Amen. Somebody say, and not have to be borrowing. Somebody say amen. amen. And, and see, that, so that's the will of God. God says, I don't want you being a servant to the lender. Amen. You're having to pay 28% interest and 35% interest. You know, and get a credit card to take this, pay twenty five dollars a month, but it's gonna take it three hundred and sixty years to pay it off. <laughs> so I say, Amen. The devil does that. And but but let me tell you something again, no everybody said no condemnation. Because God is here to bring us out of this situation. Somebody say amen. <clears throat> so point number two why we come out of debt is because debt is a destroyer of happiness. Amen. Uh, if it is a father of stress, oh my god, I've been there before. Uh, it spreads like a cloud over the whole firmament of man's being, and it touches every area of your life. Oh, my God. That ain't nothing worse than stress that's caused from what? Debt. And not having enough in Jesus' name. People have died not because they had clogged arteries, not because, you know, uh, they ate the wrong food, which that can cause it, but they, they're just, just stressed. I just can't handle it no more. Are you following me? And see, and so a lot of people, high blood pressure. Much of that is called just by, some of it's called by DNA, it's when it's in your family, but some of it is called because it's stress. Blood pressure, I, I, my blood pressure went up so high one time, because my mother, she, she passed away at high blood pressure, and so that kind of is in my DNA. In Jesus' name, I got another DNA because by his stress I'm healed, but I understand I got to watch that because it runs in my family in the natural realm. But, uh, so one time, my, my blood pressure was like 190 over, like 100 something. The doctor told me, he said, look, whenever you have blood pressure, he said, he, like that, don't come here. Go straight to the hospital. <laughs> he said, because you're, you're on the verge of having a, a heart attack. Are you following me? But what I'm saying is stress is crazy. It's, it's no good. And, 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 a lot, and a lot of it's caused by bills. Amen. It's just plain old, everybody said plain old bills. Amen. Amen. So point number three is this. Living debt free without the pressure of bills will destroy the father of stress. You can be happy. Your children can be happy. The pressure is gone. And you can do both for the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And, you know, I remember, my, my, you know, we so broke one time. Every time Christmas came, I felt like I turned to be a Job witness. Because they, they didn't believe in Christmas. I said, we don't believe in Christmas. <laughs> but really, I was just broke. Are you following me? But that is crazy. You know what I mean? It's just no good. 
Like I said, nothing, it is not a sin, but it can get you where you feel like you have sin. And it gets you stressful. Somebody say amen. And, 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 and your kids are unhappy because they can't, they can't have what they want to have. Other kids got bicycles, and they got to get one that everybody got to share. <laughs> you know, I, I, you find, it, it, it's, it's crazy. And that's why God is saying, you know, you know, to teach this because there's some people that really want to come out of this thing. And God can help us come out of it. Somebody say amen. amen. You know, so point number four is this. Point number four is this. That that debt freedom was God's original economic package before the fall. Amen. You know, was God before God created us, he, he made sure that we could have a debt free life. Yes. He, before he came, before he created us, he put us into what they call the Garden of Eden. Bills already paid. Food already there. Money already there. But when man sinned, he, he, God said, from now on, you have to work by the sweat of your brow. Yeah. But that was not God's original purpose. Yeah. Just like us, when you, have, when you have a baby coming in, you don't wait till that baby come before you get a baby bed or diapers. You know, you, you have that baby bed prepared, double prepared before, because a new baby is coming. And you don't want that baby to come in and say, well, you can't come in right now because we, we, we still owe Sears and Roebuck on your bed. So we got to wait, you know, so right now you can't sleep in bed. And right now we're going, we need, you need some diaper, but we, but we got to get them on credit today because we, but, but God's original purpose was what? In the Garden of Eden, he had all that done before he brought us into the garden. And once God had earth in together, he put us into a debt-free garden that, that we didn't even need a, a down payment on. There's even no closing costs on. That was God's original purpose for our lives. But Adam and Eve, when they sinned, we came into another system called the world. Amen. And many times this debt system makes us operate in that world. It's to understand that, we, that God wants to operate from a debt-free perspective. Yes, Somebody say amen. amen. So it's getting back to the kingdom of God, a, a purpose on how God wanted us to do in that area. Again, no condemnation. What's my getting out of it? Somebody say Amen. amen. So, so in other words, then let's go into this, let's go now to how. Let me give you some practical things for a moment on how to live debt free. This is practical. Some require some discipline, amen. initial discipline. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Number one, you have to believe that it's possible. Yes. Yes. Amen. So, you know, because God says it is. Yes. Because sometimes when you're going through the things, so Lord, it ain't possible. I'm, I got my mom over there at this. My daddy was like this. My daddy told me one time he had so many bills, he couldn't even buy soda water. That's country, y'all. That's, it's, it's pop. That's, that's called a, a Coca-Cola. I'm from the country. It was called soda water, you follow me? <laughs> so let, let me get back city-fied again. You know, I'm, I'm from the country. But, uh, but he said, he's, but dad, he said he's, we had, it was seven of us kids. He's trying to take care of all the bills, take care of all of us. He said, when I got paid, I, I just turned my whole check over because the bills was already due. That's tough to live by, is that right? So you, so you got to, that's why I say you got to get faith to believe, number one, that number one, that God, it is the will of God. Amen. And I got to believe that God wants me out of debt. Amen. That this is not the will of God that I be stressed out like this. Somebody say amen. amen. So notice the book of Romans, from Romans chapter number 13 and verse number 8, what it says. It says what? Oh, no man, anything but the love. So God says, I, the, only, the only debt I want you to be in is loving other people. But it's hard to love, folks, when you, you ain't, man, ain't got time to be talking about your bills. I got my bills to pay. But you can be the lender. You can love people at the level you want to love them. You can, you can, you can put up money for your kids, and you, know, and, and you can leave them a great inheritance like this. Somebody say amen. And, but, but see, he said, oh, no man, anything. So get to the point where you're not obligated to nobody. Somebody say amen in those areas. And everybody said, that's the will of God for my life. Can y'all see that today? Yes. Point number two is this, is you must master money and not let it master you. You must master its power and not be driven by it. Amen. Now, and, you know, and sometimes you don't recognize how powerful money is until you got it and you end up spending money you ain't got to impress people that you don't, that you don't, you don't like, that don't even care about you got or not. But it's something about money that makes you want to like say, I want y'all to know that I, that I got it going on now. I got it by credit. <laughs> So I say, man, I'm wearing these shoes, but I, st I still owe the bank for these shoes right now. Everybody said, no condemnation. See, I got, I've been there, done, they got the watch and everything, they can prove it. Are you following me? Somebody say, amen. But, but, but not being driven by money, not letting them master, you become the master of money. Taking control of that thing. Somebody say, amen. Point number three is this. Learn to uh, cut out all, this is, this is not, this not always, but in, in, in turning things around. Learn to cut out all unnecessary expenses 
If you don't need it, don't buy it. Amen. Everybody said discipline. Amen. Now, it don't come a time you're going to be able to buy what you want to buy. But we're talking about coming, everybody said coming out of debt. You find me, you know, and, and these are things we got to learn, you know, and, and, and like I said, it, it requires some discipline. For, you know, discipline is forced obedience to have it, it's, it's formed. Because sometimes, man, I'm so, I'm, I'm so used to this, man, I got, my, I got, look at my credit card, I got $50 left on that, I, I, I can spend. So, <laughs> hey, everybody said, been there, done that. Been there, done that. All right, all right, praise God. So cut out all unnecessary expenses. If you don't need it, what? Don't buy it. Are y'all getting this today? Point number four is what? Live within your income and never exceed it. Because that's what causes it to get into debt. You know what I mean? Like if I got a credit card, if I can pay it off at the end of the month, I'm doing good. But if I, but, but if I don't have the money to pay for it at the end of the month, then it's using me and I'm not using it. Are y'all following us today? Point, uh, 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 and then point number five is what? Start where you are by paying off little things in cash. You go up from there. Furniture. Maybe I just, I just need a chair. Well, I'm believe, you know everything else got, got got bills on, but I'm I'm gonna get this, I'm 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 gonna start buying this one chair in cash. Pretty soon when I, I grab I buy a couch in cash. Pretty soon I can buy a bed in cash. And pretty soon the car I got 60 months on it, but I'm gonna start paying one extra p uh, payment every three months to get that down. So, so, I'm, so I'm learning how, are you following me? I'm going to come out, but eventually I'll be able to pay, I'll be able to pay the car off in, in, uh, in half the time. And then one day, I'm going to go in there and pay cash for the whole car. Amen. But how did I start off? I started off by getting the, the, buying the one chair. You know, but I got to start the process. Somebody say amen. amen. And, and, and understand it's going to require some discipline in those areas. Somebody say Amen. amen. And, 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 and so, so think about this. If I owe $100 a month on a bill and I pay that bill off, I just gave myself a $100 raise. Yes, sir. And, and then I, I, the next one, I conquer the one that I'm paying $200 a month on. Once I get, conquer that one, I just gave myself a $200 raise. So now I've got $300 that I didn't have before and ain't got no raise yet except the fact I pay off the bills. So I, that's how, so that's how I start off. You, so you got to get, everybody said get started. Amen? Now, point number six is this. Everybody said speak to my debt. You got, did did, did y'all ever talk to your washing machine? Come on, shake the thing. Talk to your refrigerator. Talk to your car. Come on, start, start, start. We do that, don't we? We we'll start talking to your money. Somebody say amen. amen. Look, look what Jesus said in Mark chapter number uh, 11, should be 23. You know, I'm mistake on the number, but it's actually Mark 11, 23. It said, Verily I say unto you that what? Whosoever shall say unto this mountain of debt, Be thou what? Removed, and be thou cast into the sea. And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he can have whatsoever he saith. So I'm gonna start saying, I'm living free from debt. I'm gonna start talking to that, that, that hundred dollar month payment. I'm calling you paid in Jesus' name. I'm gonna look at that car and say, You're gonna be paid in Jesus' name. I'm looking at that furniture, you're gonna be paid in Jesus' name. Because I got I can, I can start speaking to it. God said if I can speak to it, then I can have whatsoever I say if I start believing what I say gonna to come to pass. I gotta believe that that, that, that that's power in my tongue and, and, and allow the angels to, everybody said the angels to go forth. Because this is a supernatural part of it, is that right? So 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 that's number one. You gotta speak everybody said speak to my debt. Jesus spoke to mountains. He spoke to trees. No, he spoke, he spoke to trees, didn't he? What is money made out of? Trees. You just talking to Jesus talked to trees. He needs money to pay a second one time. Jesus said, go down there to the lake and, 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 and the first fish you some, it'll be a piece of money in his mouth. Is that right? Jesus, how many know Jesus know where the money's at? How, Jesus know where the money's at, praise God. And he can take your two fish and five loaves of bread and multiply it. Now, point number seven is this. Avoid spending dependent on yours or someone else's speculation about a get-rich-quick scheme. 
Because there's people going to come to you and say, well, you know, I can tell you how to get out of real debt real quick. No, no, don't do that. Because, because you know, if it was that good, they would, they would be doing it. Amen. So you got to watch them because they'll get you back in debt again. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Yeah. Number eight is what? Never depend, never eat or spend your seed. Refuse to touch your time to give it to God because it will destroy your future. Because one of the things that sometimes we do, we be tempted to say, oh God, I'm out of all this debt, I, you know, I, I can't afford the tithe. That's when you can't afford the tithe. And so I, know, I, I know I'm getting to this point, y'all. You know, come on, y'all, keep, y'all stay with me, stay with me. Somebody say amen. Look, look, look what God said. Look what God says in Matthew. I mean, it should be Malachi. I got, no, no, I got Malachi. I must have been typing because I, I, I don't type with all my, I type with two fingers. I'm from the old school. I'm, amen. So I hit the wrong screen. But it's Malachi on my notes. On your notes is Malachi up there. Good. On my notes is crazy. But anyway, everybody said, <laughs> read it with me. Read, read it with me. It said, bring all the what? Time into the storehouse. There may be meat in my house, and prove me now here with the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there should not be room enough to receive it all. And in verse 11 says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit for the time in the fields of the Lord of hosts. What are you talking about? That your, your seed and your tithe is your dead buster. Amen. You ever heard of gold, ghost busters? Your tithe and your seed is, is, is debt busters. God said, if you bring that tithe, now I'm not talking about doing this a debt that you owe. I'm not talking about paying your tithe. I'm talking about understanding God's principle behind the tithe. That he's not saying that you do it as a duty. He's saying do it as a seed. Understand that this tithe and your offering is a debt buster. It'll open the windows of heaven for you. It'll, it'll, it'll activate the angels of God. And God will pour you out a blessing more than you can give. You can have more than enough to start adding on them other bills now. Because now you, everybody say, I got a debt buster. My tithe and my offering are debt busters. So when you get that tithe of debt in the name of Jesus, boom, debt, you debt buster. The windows of heaven open. Blessing of God is on your life. And, and see, sometimes as pastors we talk to our wrong concerning tithing just pay your tithes no 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 don't just pay your tithes your tithe is a, is a debt buster when you your tithe is a weapon God said when you bring that tithe he said I will open the windows of heaven he said anything that's been shut down in your life going to open up I say, you get what he said? If it's been shut down, it's getting ready to open up. If heaven ain't been talking, it's getting ready to start talking to you again. I'll open the windows of heaven, and I will pour, not trickle, I'll pour you out a blessing. Because that was the original way God wanted to have you live on the blessing. Because the first thing God did in Malachi, I mean, in Genesis 1, 2, he said, the Bible said he blessed them, right? So God said, that time gets you back on that blessing on your life. And that blessing is, the, is an empowerment to prosper at the highest level. See, so don't just pay your tithes. That, 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 that's like a debt. No, your tithe is a debt. Everybody's a debt buster. He said in verse 11, he said, verse 11, he said, I'll rebuke the devourer. And God said, I'll get involved in your finances. I'll rebuke that debt. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So that tithe sanctifies your ground. He said, he said the, the devourer will no longer destroy the fruits of your ground anymore. Because when Adam and Eve sinned, God said the curse is the ground for your sake. But that tithe lifts that curse off of your ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 13, verse 8. Look what happened when you, you, you begin to plant it as a seed. He said, he said, about, he said my seed sowing. He said it, that, that the other fell into what good ground and brought forth some thir- hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. When you begin to do things as a seed that you sow instead of a debt that you owe, it comes back to you thirtyfold, sixtyfold, and hundredfold. You move into a whole other level of living. Yes. Yes. Amen. So it's not a duty. It's not, a, it's not trying to say, I'm trying to, I, I, I belong to this church, so I got to pay my tithe. No, don't, that's not the reason. God says it's all about you. 
I, I, I want to get this debt off your life. I want you to give. In, I want you to begin to walk in the blessing that I want you to be in. You're my children. Hallelujah. So, so, so Abraham was a tithe, but, but he, he taught his son Isaac this. So there was a famine. One time there was a famine in the land, and everybody was broke. Everything was, everything was going bad. But, he, but, but, but Isaac understood the principle that if I can sow during this time, I can move into the hundredfold up in my life. So notice in, in, in Genesis chapter number 26, at verse number 12, it said, Then Isaac, what? He sowed in that land and received what? In the same year... A hundredfold. Can you know your your, your, your your can change? I'm not talking about you know on the guilt, uh, get, getting your faith to level that I'm going to operate in God's principles. He said he, he in that same year when he sold, he got a hundredfold, and the Lord what blessed him. Verse thirteen: The man waxed great, went forward, and grew until he became very great. Now the Message Bible says, listen to the Message Bible. The Message Bible says about this: Isaac planted crops in that land. And took in a huge harvest. Can I prophesy to y'all today? Amen. This year you're going to take in a huge harvest. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says that God blessed him. And the man got richer and richer by the day. Until he was very wealthy. He said because he sold. He didn't sow out of guilt. He didn't sow because some preachers preaching. Y'all better do. No, no. Get rid of all that. Well, that's a God love the triple, Gary. Yes. Begin to understand the principle that God got you in mind. Amen. Your seed going to produce some things this year. Somebody say amen. 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 I never forget when my wife and I, you know, we, we were, you know, uh, this has been years ago. And, 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 and when my, I was just pa passing the church. And, 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 and my church, all the church bills and my home bills equaled out to $3,020. That's been you know, a long time ago. But I didn't. Have, but I was, you know, I, I had more month than money. Right. And when Lord spoke to my heart about this, this principle, He said, He said, what you don't do? He said, take that amount of money, and you and your wife get together and y'all just agree on it. He said, if that, this one time about this years ago, Reverend Shabbat was coming into town. He's an evangelist back in the days. He said, he said when he comes into town, he said, so I, 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 I see it here and believe me for hundredfold return. Amen. Well, I had nothing to lose. The most I can do is stay broke. But God put that in my heart. So I did it. So, you know, during that, during that week, during that month, money was coming in, things like that. But at the end of that, I still owed money for the, the, the church rent. And, uh, and we were literally at the women's club in Tempe. We was, this is back in, in 1980s. We were using that, we were using that as, a, as a church. And, and I was behind, and they had told me if I had the money by that day, they were going to put me out. So I, I brought a band that day. I plan on raising money that day, you know, you know, to try to raise money. I'm trying to find, but, you know, uh, I, 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 I had a church in Coos. I went out to church in Coos so on my way back. In my spirit, God said, stop it, so get, you to, get you some gum. Get some gum? You know, I just kind of followed that unction. You know, simple. And so what happened was I got the gum, so I come through the channel, I go to the women's club, and I got there, and the people, the people in the women's club was coming out. I said, oh, my God. I got the people in there, and then... I said, what can I do for y'all? They said, well, says, uh, we came here to take the keys because you didn't be able to pay. He said, but there was someone that was here that got there early from my, before I did and said that, uh, what can I do for this? Uh, we came in to get the money for the rent or we got to close this thing down. He said, well, I'm Dr. Craig's friend. He took out his check and paid the rent off. <laughs> now, if I had to stop for that gum, if I said the little things, that five minutes, that, that five minutes delay at the Circle K, give me some gum, kept me from being there. Because right. <laughs> I had come, I was told, I'm sorry, I can't get this. But it had my friend there with enough money in his account and paid the debt off. Five minutes delay. So delays are not denials. It's just giving God a little more time to do what he's going to do in your life in Jesus' name. That is for somebody right now. Your delay is not your denial. It's just giving God a little more time to put things back together again to have your miracle in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so my point number nine is this. Don't worry about failing. Because this is your year to rise and be debt free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 
I don't, I don't think I have it on the notes here, but I'm going to give y'all one scripture right down. In the book of Micah, chapter 7, verse 8, it says this. Rejoice not against me, O my enemy, because when I fall, I shall arise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I may have failed. I may be in debt. But just keep on looking. It reminds me of a story of a grandma who her, uh, who her daughter... Her granddaughter came to grab she was she was fixing some some, some cornbread or, or cake or whatever it was. And the daughter says, Grandma, it, it ain't rose yet, cause you know it's still flat. Grandma said, just gonna be alright. It's gonna be alright. Just keep on. And uh, and came back about 15 minutes later. Grandma, grandma, it still ain't rose. Grandma, it's not gonna rise, it's still flat. Grandma said, just hold on, it's gonna be alright. And so pretty soon, about an hour later, the fourth minute, whatever it was, all of a sudden a little baby went in there and then and, and the cake had rose. She said, Grandma, Grandma, it rose. What caused it to ro- rise? Grandma said, you know, the reason why I know it's going to rise is because I know what I put in it. That's right. Amen. Why do I know y'all going to rise out of debt? Because I know what God done put inside you. You may be down right now, but this is your year to come up. Hallelujah. You may be living in debt right now, but this is your year to walk in abundance. Because God said, I will make you the head and not the tail. I'll make you above and not beneath. I'll make you the lender and not everybody said this is my year to live free from debt. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah on that. Praise <laughs> Come on, get you you just won the Super Bowl, Saints. Give me a shout of praise for that. Hallelujah. I speak to dead in your life in the name of Jesus. And I rest it by the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. It is not the will of God for your life. And I speak today as you move forward in the word of God and you begin to meditate on this word that the unction of the Holy Ghost begin to cause you to rise up out of whatever you've been going through. God's going to cause people, places, and things to come together in the neck of time. So don't worry about denies. Don't worry about delays because God says I'm on the way. The angels are on their way. They're working for, on your behalf in Jesus' name. Glory to God. So lift up your head and give him a great big shout of praise because in God's eyes it's already done. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I decree debt, I decree debt busting faith on every one of you in Jesus' name. You get that car said you busted. That lets you the bill, you busted. <laughs> Glory to God. Are y'all received that today? Come on, give God some more praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the word of God today. Thank you for every person that is, that is here. Hallelujah. Just, just a real uh, uh, a call for, the, for those that do not know Jesus in your life. Because that's the biggest de- de- uh, dead breaker. Is when you open your heart up to Jesus and allow him to come into your life. And be Lord of your life. He's the true debt buster. He's the sin buster. He's the failure buster. So if you've never received him in your life, let's pray this prayer together. So Lord Jesus, I believe you are the son of God. I believe you died for my sins and you rose again from the dead. You are my master. And Jesus, I receive you today. As my personal Lord, my personal Savior, and I thank you that through your blood and by your power, I am delivered from the authority of Satan, and I'm in your kingdom. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God some praise for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all receive that? The presence of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. That's right. And then what I want to do, I'm not going to ask you to come up, but for you that said, Lord, this is a message for me today.
We want you to just stand. I want to pray for you. I ain't going to have you come up. I want, you to pray. I want you to just stand. If you said this message for me today, I need to hear this message today. Stand right now. I'm going to pray for you specifically right now. In the name of Jesus. Come when you stand, it, it, it's just letting God know, Lord, I thank you for hearing my cry. Thank you, Lord, you for hearing my cry. Hearing my prayer to you. And I receive this word today from you, God. In the name of Jesus. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those that are on Facebook, on YouTube, on whatever they, uh, they're watching, but also pray for you that are here right now, that right now in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ heals you from the stress, from the high blood pressure, from all that's been created through operating in this debt. And I thank you, Father, for giving them the wisdom of God to take full control of a debt, insufficiency, that this is the year to rise up out of it, and I declare the wisdom of God and the favor of God in their lives, in their families, in their businesses, in every area of their lives, in Jesus' name of God. Heal them of the stress. Heal them of the high blood pressure. Heal them of the kidney disease. And anything else that's been produced through this stress, Father. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The victory is here. The victory is here in Jesus' name. But praise God. It's such a wonderful time. And what I want to do for you, how many of you, how many of you receive your communion? If you, if you happen to come in and did not receive your communion, raise your hand, they'll bring you one real quickly. Because this is a time for the Lord's table. Because he gave us the word today, didn't he? And we want to take a moment to just, uh, maybe y'all can bring me one also. We're going, to take a, we're going to take a moment just to share together the Lord's table. He was wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquities. Chast time of your peace was on him, and with his stripes you are healed. Dead has been busted. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we consecrate this time before you. And, Lord, we, we pray as you, we take the, the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, Amen. we identify ourselves with you in the death, burial, and resurrection. We give you thanks for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's take it together. Your bread. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And now let's take the cup together. You, the precious blood of Jesus Christ that broke debts off of your life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. <laughs> See, the anointing is here, isn't it? Anointing is here right now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's, 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 let's take a moment just to worship him. Just worship him. Thank God for his victory. For the victory that he has won. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, now we're gonna we're gonna prepare now in, 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 in this atmosphere to receive our tithe and our offerings. Now let me say again, you don't pay your tithe, you present your tithe to the Lord. Because tithing is worship. I'm gonna say it again, you don't pay your tithes, you present your tithe to the Lord. That God you prosper me at this level. Amen. And Lord, I'm, bring, I'm, I'm bringing my tithe as worship to you. Yes. Hallelujah. As Everybody said worship. worship. And so if you need an envelope, maybe you already got one, fill your envelope out. Checks out uh, Message Church. 
but also for those that are giving online. Uh, there's uh, areas right there online that you can give, the different aspects that you can give on that. On your tithes and offering, we'll have that up in just one moment. And, uh, and we believe God with you, uh, you know, for, uh, for your supernatural offerings in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, I guess they'll have that up in a moment. For the tithing, offering, the different avenues to give. Praise God, especially for you that are online. People now give on, they say 80% of people now give online. <laughs> but right there, it's, it's a different area. The message church, uh, you can text the 77977. You can give online through the, uh, there. You can also give to the cash app. Those are the areas you can give uh, online, praise God. But the main thing, again, we got to get over this trying to pay our, pay our way through. Tithing, everybody says worship. It's a dead buster. See, the devil don't want you to learn worshiping your tithes. He wants you to pay your tithes. But you want to start worshiping God with your tithes. You want to start giving as worship. Well, this seed I'm sowing is worship because I'm trusting you for a hundredfold this year. It's making God your source. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So, um... At this time, I'm going to pray, and then they're going to come around, they're going to receive the, your, your tithes and offerings, okay? Father, in the name of Jesus, we receive the tithe and the offerings of the people of God as worship unto you, Father, as they give it both online, on Facebook, YouTube, and here in this audience, I decree blessing and favor on their lives. Angels, go forth now and call their finances to come in. We cancel stress, high blood pressure, and everything else. And we thank you for the rejoicing in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, they're gonna come around at this time. And they'll just... They are just... Praise God. Go right here. Mike so